Hello my dear students, in this lecture series of IIT JAM, GET, NET and SET etc exams, today's class we will start with the rotational spectroscopy. So first of all we will see what are the selection rules for rotational spectroscopy. For uh, a particular spectroscopic studies there will be a particular selection rule. So for the rotational spectroscopy the selection rule is delta j is equal to plus minus 1 where j is called the rotational uh, quantum number. So that uh, selection rule delta j is equal to plus 1 corresponds to absorption and delta j is equal to minus 1 corresponds to emission. In addition to this another selection rule for rotational spectroscopy is that the molecule undergoing rotational spectra must possess a permanent dipole moment. So as a, as a dipolar molecule rotates, the rotating dipole constitutes the transition dipole operator mu. For example, molecules such as HCl, CO, which have permanent dipole moment, will show rotational spectra, while hydrogen, chlorine, uh, carbon dioxide will not because these molecules are not, uh, these molecules are non-polar. Okay, so in this example, uh, a, there is a question which of the following molecules will show microwave rotational spectrum. So among these molecules, hydrogen, CH4 and SF6 have uh, no permanent dipole moment. That means these molecules are non-polar. So except these three molecules, all other molecules will show pure microwave rotational uh, spectrum. Okay. Now let us discuss the principle of uh, pure rotational spectra of diatomic molecules. So to discuss this we have to consider a rigid diatomic molecule. So rigid diatomic molecule means a diatomic molecules in which the internuclear distance is fixed. Okay, so we start with this. The simplest of all linear molecule uh, as shown in figure where uh, masses M1 and M2 are joined together by a rigid bar which is called the bond whose length is given by R0 is equal to R1 plus R2 uh, where R1 is the distance of the uh, first atom uh, from the center of mass C and the um, R2 is the distance of the second atom uh, from the center of mass C okay so as C is the uh, center of gravity so this is defined by the moment uh, or balancing equation m1 r1 is equal to uh, m2 r2 okay now the moment of inertia about C is defined by i is equal to m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square okay now uh, substituting uh, equation 2 6 in this equation we get i is equal to m2 r2 r1 plus m1 r1 r2 from this we get i is equal to r1 r2 into m1 plus m2 however from equation 2.5 and 2.6 we get m1 r1 equal to m2 r2 which is given by uh, m2 into r0 minus r1 so from these equations we get that r1 is equal to m2 r0 divided by m1 plus m2 and r2 is equal to m1 r0 divided by m1 plus uh, m2 now substituting uh, this in uh, equation uh, 2.7 we get i is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into r0 square which is, is equal to mu r0 square where mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 which is called the reduced mass of the uh, system by the use of the Schrodinger equation it may be shown that the rotational energy levels L to the rigid diatomic molecules are given by the expression Ej is equal to H square by 8 pi square i into j into j plus 1 joules where j is the rotational quantum number whose values are given by j is equal to 0 1 2 uh, 3 dot dot in this expression h is plus constant and i is the moment of inertia either ib or ic since both are equal the quantity j which can take integral values from 0 upward is called the rotational quantum number its restriction to integral values arises directly out of the solution of the schrodinger equation and is by no means uh, arbitrary 
and it is this restriction which effectively allows only certain discrete rotational energy levels to the um, molecule okay so you just remember this equation number 2.10 derivation is not required just uh, this you remember that this equation is obtained by solving the schrodinger equation okay the expression of energy is a given by equation 2.10 is expressed and as the allowed energies in joules however we are interested in difference between the energies or more particularly in the corresponding frequency nu which is given by nu is equal to delta e by h hertz or in wave number nu bar is equal to delta e by hc centimeter inverse uh, so uh, it is useful to consider energies expressed in this unit so therefore the energies in centimeter inverse is given by epsilon j is equal to ej divided by ac which is equal to a is by 8 pi square ic into j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse where j is equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on so here c is the velocity of light and is expressed in centimeter per second since the unit of wave number is reciprocal to centimeters so this equation number 2.11 is uh, usually abbreviated to uh, epsilon j is equal to b j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse where b is a constant which is called the rotational constant and is given by b is equal to h by 8 pi square i uh, in i b into c or i into c centimeter inverse using equation 2.12 epsilon j is equal to bj into j plus 1 centimeter inverse uh, we can uh, arrange the rotational energy levels as shown in this figure so here uh, j is equal to when j is equal to 0 that is uh, the ground uh, rotational level we get epsilon j is equal to 0 uh, so when j is equal to 1 we get epsilon j is equal to 2b when j is equal to 2 we get epsilon j is equal to 6b when j is equal to 3 we get epsilon j is equal to 12b and uh, so on okay so these are the rotational allowed rotational energies of the rigid diatomic molecule we now need to consider the difference between the energy levels in order to discuss the spectrum if we imagine the molecule to be in the j is equal to zero state that is the ground rotational state in which no rotation occurs we can let incident uh, radiation be allowed to raise it to the j is equal to one state so therefore we can write epsilon j is equal to 1 to uh, minus epsilon j is equal to 0 is equal to 2b minus 0 which is, is equal to 2b centimeter inverse and therefore we can write bar j is equal to 0 to j is equal to 1 is equal to 2b centimeter inverse in other words an absorption line will appear at 2b centimeter inverse if now the molecule is raised from the j is equal to 1 to j is equal to 2 level by absorption of more energy we we can see that a new bar j is equal to 1 to uh, j is equal to 2 is equal to epsilon j is equal to 2 minus uh, epsilon j is equal to 1 which is, is equal to 6b minus 2b which is, is equal to 4b centimeter inverse so in general to raise the molecule from the state j to j state j plus 1 we would write uh, new bar j to j plus 1 is equal to b j into j plus 1 into j plus 2 minus b j into j plus 1 on simplification we get new bar j to j plus 1 is equal to 2b into j plus 1 centimeter inverse okay the allowed transitions between the rotational levels of a rigid diatomic molecule and the spectrum which arises from them are shown in this uh, figure. So here you can see the transitions 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 and so on. So the transition 0 to 1 uh, will give you a spectral line at uh, new bar is equal to 0. So the transition uh, from j is equal to 1 to 2 will give you a spectral line at uh, new bar is equal to uh, 2b centimeter inverse. So next line will appear at 4b, the next one will appear at 6b, 8b, 10b, 12b and uh, so on. So from this uh, spectrum we can clearly see that the spacing between any two 
adjacent uh, rotational lines is given by 2b uh, centimeter inverse right now we can see one application of the rotational spectra which is that uh, using the rotational spectra we can calculate the internuclear distance between the two atoms in a diatomic molecules so let us see how to calculate this uh, we know that the rotational constant b is given by b is equal to h by 8 pi square ic so from this equation we can write i is equal to h by uh, 8 pi square bc again we know that i is equal to mu no mu into r square so we can write uh, mu r square is equal to replace i by h uh, divided by 8 by square b c so from this equation we can write r is equal to h by 8 pi square b c mu to the power half thus knowing the masses of the two atoms in the diatomic molecule and the rotational constant b we can determine the bond length or the internuclear distance using the above equation now we'll see how what are the relative intensities of the rotational spectral lines the rotational intensities of spectral lines depend upon the relative population of the energy levels as we see uh, that uh, even at room temperature may uh, many of the uh, diatomic molecules are present in the excited energy level since the energy level population is given by Boltzmann distribution equation and the intensity of the rotational lines is evidently proportional to the Boltzmann distribution of molecules in the rotational energy levels. That means intensity is directly proportional to nj by n naught is equal to e to the power ej by kt. Rotational energy levels are however uh, degenerate and their energy is uh, degeneracy g1 for a dynamic molecule is given by gj is equal to twice j plus 1. In other words, for a given uh, value of j, the energy level is 2j plus 1 fold degenerate. For j is equal to 0, g j is equal to 1 and for j is equal to 1, g j is equal to 3, for j is equal to 2, g j is equal to 5 and so on. Thus the intensity of the rotational spectral line is determined by the product of the degeneracy factor and the Boltzmann exponential factor. Hence intensity is directly proportional to nj by n0 is equal to 2j plus 1 into e to the power ej by kt. Uh, since Aj is equal to Ac into uh, Fj or Epsilon J, uh, therefore we can write uh, Epsilon J or Fj is equal to Bj into J plus 1. So hence uh, we can write uh, Nj by N0 is equal to 2J uh, plus 1 into e to the power minus Bj into J plus 1 Ac by Kt. So the quantity Nj by N0 is plotted versus T for a diatomic molecule as shown here in this figure this figure is the plot of the relative Boltzmann population uh, versus j for a diatomic molecule so we see that the relative intensity passes through a maximum value and it can be shown that the value of j corresponding to the maximum uh, po is population given by j max is equal to kt by 2 uh, acb to the power half minus half the j max should be uh, rounded off to the nearest integral value. We will see some important relations obtained from the rigid rotator model. The moment of inertia i is related uh, to the reduced mass and uh, the equilibrium internuclear distance that is i is equal to mu r naught square where the mu is the reduced mass is given by m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. The energy in wave number for the rotational energy level j is given by epsilon j is equal to b into j into j plus 1 where j is called the rotational quantum number and is, uh, is value r 0 1 2 3 and uh, so on. Here b is called the rotational quantum number and is given by b equal to h by 8 pi square i into c where uh, i is the moment of inertia and c is the velocity of light so from this relation we can uh, write uh, that uh, b is equal to h by 8 uh, pi square uh, mu r naught square into c uh, this relation is obtained by uh, substituting i is equal to mu r naught square 
so from this we can write that r naught is equal to uh, h by 8 pi square mu into bc to the power half so using this relation we can find out the internuclear distance between a rigid between the two atoms of the rigid diatomic molecule then we have derived that uh, the uh, energy in wave number for a particular uh, transition uh, from j to j plus 1 is given by uh, nu bar j to plus 1 is equal to 2 b j into j plus 1 so using this relationship the rotational lines uh, uh, obtained at uh, nu is nu bar is equal to 0 2 b 4 b 6 b 8 b uh, centimeter inverse so this is the summary of the last class about the rotational spectroscopy. So using this concept, uh, you can solve a numerical problem. Uh, this problem one, the pure rotational spectrum of uh, CO molecule shows that the rotational lines are separated by 3.86 cm inverse. Calculate the moment of inertia and the internuclear separation of the CO molecule. I am giving you some uh, hints to solve this problem, you do it yourself. So here in this question, the uh, separation between the uh, rotational lines is given by 3.86 cm inverse. That means 2B is equal to 3.86 cm inverse. So convert this cm inverse into meter inverse and find out the value of B. Okay. Now substitute the value of B in this equation to get the value of the moment of inertia i then you determine the reduced mass of the molecule using the relation mu is equal to m1 m2 by m1 uh, plus m2 then convert this into uh, kilogram okay then uh, using this relation i is equal to mu r naught square you can easily find out the value of r naught okay alternatively you can also use this equation uh, and substitute uh, the value of mu and p to find the value of r naught directly okay next we will see the expression for the rotational energy so we have got the expression of reduced mass mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 by definition of the angular momentum of a rotating molecule uh, the angular momentum is given by L is equal to I into omega where omega is the angular velocity. But we know that the angular momentum is quantized and is given by uh, L is equal to square root of uh, j into j plus 1 into h by 2 pi. This relation we have derived in the uh, quantum chemistry classes. So further the energy of the rotating molecule is given by Er is equal to half I omega square so the quantized value of the rotational energy is given by er is equal to half of i omega square which can be written as i omega square uh, by twice i which is equal to l square by twice i now replace l by uh, j into j plus 1 uh, h square by 4 pi square uh, divided by twice i so simplifying this we get f er is equal to uh, AC square by 8 pi square i into j into j plus 1. So this is the expression of the rotational energy. So using this expression we can find out the energy of the different rotational levels uh, here as shown here in this figure. So when j is equal to 0 we get a er is equal to 0. This is the lowest rotational level and its energy is 0. When j is equal to 1, er is equal to twice h square divided by 8 pi square i. When j is equal to 2, uh, er is equal to 6 h square by 8 pi square i and so on. So in this way we get the various rotational levels along with their energies. Now we will see the effect of the isotopic substitution. When an atom in a molecule is replaced by its isotope, there will be a change in the moment of inertia and the value of the rotational constant B of the molecule. As a result, each individual isotopic species will show a different spectrum. However, the bond length of the molecules are assumed to remain constant. Thus, for two species of isotopic molecule, we have 
b is equal to h by 8 pi square i c and b dash is equal to h by 8 pi square i dash into c. Thus the ratio of the rotational constants is given by b dash by b is equal to h by 8 pi square i dash c divided by h by 8 pi square i c. So this implies b dash by b is equal to uh, i by i dash. Now since uh, i is equal to mu r square, so b dash by b is equal to mu r square divided by mu dash r square from which we get b dash by b is equal to mu by mu dash. So this equation may be used to calculate the uh, isotopic masses of an element. For example, uh, in this problem, the value of the rotational constant for HCl35 molecule is uh, 10.5909 cm inverse. If the chlorine atom is replaced by the, its isotope, the value of the rotational constant becomes 10.5739 cm inverse. Assuming internuclear distance to be constant, determine the mass of the isotope of Cl atom. Given mass of 35 Cl atom is equal to 34.96 double A T. So we try to solve this problem. I am uh, giving you some hints how to solve this problem. So here uh, the value of B and B dash are given. So value of B, take, consider value of B is equal to 10.5909 and uh, the value of B dash is equal to 10.5739. So you determine the reduced mass of HCl35 uh, mu is equal to uh, m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2. Uh, then you use this re relation b dash uh, by b is equal to mu by mu dash uh, to evaluate the value of mu dash. Now from the value of mu dash you can easily calculate the uh, value of the uh, isotope of the chlorine atom okay try to solve this problem uh, if you find any difficulty i'll help you okay so this is all about the rotational spectroscopy dear students try to solve as many problems as you can from different books and improve your performance thanks to all of you for your kind patience